Okay, uh, this, we're going to take a look at some pattern, actually just one pattern. There's just one pattern um, that I want to look at when it comes to imaginary numbers, okay? So uh, here's the pattern. And over here, uh, we're going to do some scratch work. So here we're going to develop that pattern, okay? Um, first things first, we know that i equals the square root of negative 1. Right, so i is equal to the square root of negative one. For our pattern though, I'm gonna say that i is the same thing as i, all right? Now, <clears throat> over here on my scratch work, if I take i and I square it, and I square the square root of negative one, then that means that i squared is equal to, well, the square root squared cancels each other out and we're left with negative one. So i squared is equal to negative one. So in our pattern here, we can say i squared equals negative one. Okay, so far so good. Good. Now, uh, my suggestion is that every time we add something to the pattern, you pause it and ask yourself, how did I get there? Because this pattern um, is going to show up uh, a couple of times. So I want to make sure that you know exactly how this pattern works, okay? All right, so here, let's take a look. Um, before I continue my scratch work here, remember there's a fact that, um, you know, if I have x to the n times x to the m, it is x to the n plus m, right? And I'm going to use this fact backwards, okay? So if I take a look at i to the third, i to the third, i to the third could be considered as i to the two plus one, right? So i to the second times i to the first. So I could say that this is i squared times i. All right, so i to the third is i squared times i. Well, i squared is negative one. So I could rewrite this as negative one times i. And simplified, negative one times i is just simply negative i. So over here on our pattern, i to the third is negative i. Okay. Now, let's take a look at i to the fourth. i to the fourth. Again, I'm going to use that fact, and I'm going to say i to the fourth is i squared times i squared. And i squared is negative one. So here I have negative one times negative one. Negative times a negative is positive, one times one is one. So here I just get one. All right, so i to the fourth is just one. So i to the fourth power is just one. Okay. I hope, I hope that you uh, have buckled your seatbelt and have prepared yourself for the wild ride that is about to happen. This is quite possibly one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. What about I to the fifth? Well, I to the fifth, I could break it up in a bunch of different ways, right? I could use I squareds. I could do I squared, I squared, and then I. But I to the fourth is just one, right? And one times anything is itself, so I'm going to break this into I to the fourth times i. i to the fourth we know is one and i is just i so here i to the fifth power gives us i. So i to the fifth is i. All right i to the sixth. i to the sixth we're going to use i to the fourth times i squared i to the fourth power is one. i squared earlier we saw was negative one and one times negative one is negative one. So i to the sixth power is negative one. i to the seventh is i to the fourth times i to the third, <coughs> right? Four plus three is seven, okay. So that gives us one times an i to the third, i to the third is negative i, right? So one times negative i, one times negative i is negative i. So i 
to the seventh power equals negative i. What about i to the eighth? How can I break that up? i to the eighth would be i to the fourth times i to the fourth, right? Because four times four plus four, excuse me, is eight. And i to the fourth we know is one. And one times one is one. So i to the eighth is one. Do you see the pattern develop? I, negative one, negative I, one. I, negative one, negative I, one. So that must mean that I to the ninth is I. I to the tenth, negative one. I to the eleventh is negative I. And I to the twelfth is just one. <laughs> So, I love that uh, so much. This pattern just keeps rolling, going, going, and going. Now, I could make this list forever, right? And then I would know every value, i to any power, I would know. But that's a lot of work, right? What about i to the 28th power? Well, i to the 28th power would be one. How did I get to that, right? Well, i to the 28th, I know that 28 divided by four is seven, right? So I could have written i to the 28th as i to the fourth raised to the seventh power, which is one raised to the seventh power, which is one. Hmm, that's something to think about. So whatever this number is, whatever the exponent of i is, if it's divisible by four, then it has to be one. And think about that. Four, you got a one. Uh, eight is a one. Twelve is a one. Sixteen would be one, right? So any number, if it's divisible by four, would equal uh, any exponent of i that's divisible by 4 is going to give us a 1. So there's a little pattern here. A little pattern develops. You look at the exponent of i, and you divide it by 4, right? That exponent divided by 4. If you get a remainder of, uh, let's, you know what, let's do it like this. I'm going to build a chart. That exponent divided by four, if you get a remainder of zero, right, so like something point zero, then it's going to give you a one. If you get a remainder of 0.25, then it's going to be i. If you get a remainder of 0.5, it'll be negative one. And if you get a 0.75, it's going to be negative i. And here's what I mean by that. Let's take a look. If I took uh, 125, for example, 125, if I divide that by 4, then it's 31.25. 31.25. That 0.25 tells me that it's going to be i. So that tells me that i raised to the 125th power equals i. I'm sorry. No, it's a pen mark. Sorry. I raised to the 125th power is just I. What about I to the 411th power? I don't know. Let's go take a look. Uh, 411 divided by 4 is 102.75. So the 0.75, that's a remainder of 3, tells me it's going to be negative I. So I raised to the 411th power is negative I. That's crazy. All right, the ones that I think you should really know for sure, you should obviously know these four. You should know how to work this chart, right? 
couple of examples as to how to work this chart. Uh, we're going to do just a, a couple of these, but this is going to help us out whenever we get to uh, uh, adding and subtracting, so operations, operations of complex numbers. 